It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, November 3rd, 2011. I am James Burns. Thank you so much for joining us. We are joined now by Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today? Well, pretty good. How about you? Oh, I'm not bad. Just enjoying the fall weather, one of my favorite times of the year. And um, unfortunately, that's about the best thing happening right now. I mean, it's all over the place uh, how things are going from bad to worse. And I think the first place I'd like to uh, discuss with you today is what's going on in Europe. Um, you've been keeping an eye on this for quite some time now. And uh, with the situation in Greece as well tied in. Uh, Bob, what what exactly is happening right now? Well, um, there have been... Uh, announcements that the president of Greece, uh, the prime minister, was going to resign. And then he said he wasn't going to resign because the other party said that they would work with him. And because of that, he said that he would not have to have a referendum. Now, uh, I, I find this all rather strange. They're up to a number of things here, I think. I don't think he's electable. I think there'll be an election shortly, shortly within three months. I think he was told in pretty straight terms uh, by the European leaders that you better not have that referendum because if you do, we know for sure the people are going to vote against staying in the European Union, in the Euro, and they don't want the deal. And all we care about is the Euro and keeping the EU together. We don't care about Greece. You know, they could all fall in the sea for all we care. And, uh, you know, you're a fellow Bilderberger. You're a member of the Illuminati, so you do what you're told. So he went back by email and phone, and told his henchmen that uh, he was going to try to make a deal with these others in Samaras' party, which is the opposition. Incidentally, when those two went to Harvard, they ruined together. So that will tell you how far apart they are. <laughs> Although Samaras... Um, he left PASIC, which is Papandreou's party. They had a falling out over something. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, they've been longtime friends. Um, exchanging Samaras, Samaras, however it's pronounced, uh, for Papandreou is no big improvement. Um, what are they going to do? I don't know. I don't think they'll make a deal. If they do, the people will not abide by it. 65% of them say, hey, we, we don't want any part of that. And um, I think that's kind of how it's going to end up. See, Europe knows and has known for a long time that Greece is unsavable. And they figure even if Greece left the European Union and the Euro, that they probably could make some kind of a deal with Ireland and Portugal to keep them from leaving. And um, they're still talking about resignation. Uh, they're going to have snap elections in six weeks which means he'll be out of power. Uh, he hasn't resigned. They're just going to go to elections. Uh, six weeks would put us at Christmas. Um, they probably did that because they know a lot of people won't vote. Um, 
I don't know whether that's good or bad or not. There'll be no referendum. And um, I think that's a shame because hearing directly from the people is a lot better than hearing politicians who, for the most part, have the morality of alley cats. And so uh, everything is unfolding, but it's not going to be good. Uh, the new government uh, isn't going to do any better. And um, they try to neutralize any possibility of a coup by changing the leadership in the military, <clears throat> which is not going to go down well <clears throat> with military people, active and retired. And the core, the people in the military, they, they don't like to see things like that. If a leader makes a terrible mistake, well, he gets cashiered. It's understandable. These people didn't do anything. So Papandreou will be gone in six weeks. The deal hasn't been okayed and won't be. So a big question arises. We've been living from paycheck to paycheck. We don't have any more money. How do we live between now and six weeks from now? Very good question. Oh, I just thought of something. I wonder if the Greek Orthodox Church celebrates Christmas on December 25th or later. Interesting question. As I recall, I think they might use a different date early in January. Anyway, my recollection is hazy on that. And I'll stand on that. Because when you get old, you get hazy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Most of the people I know are dead, and the rest of them have Alzheimer's disease. That's why I hang around with young people, and uh, especially in the golf course, because uh, I play usually against guys uh, 30 to 60 years old. And I outdrive them, <laughs> and they can't figure out how do you do that. In fact, I saw the doctor yesterday to do a checkup. He says, he says, I've never seen anybody in my life. This guy's in his 60s. In my life, who's had a blood pressure like yours. He said, how did you make this happen? A man your age comes in my office, and there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> there's something wrong here. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's the way you live and uh, the way you eat and what you do with yourself. But anyway, getting back to Greece, we're just going to have to wait. And there'll be more information over the next day or so tomorrow. And I'll be publishing on Saturday, and I'll have all the updated information. And I've already been writing Saturday, and that means I only have to rewrite some of it because they keep on changing the rules on me. The job of a journalist is not easy. And uh, anyway, uh, looks good. Uh, I think uh, Greece could very well be out of the euro within three to six months. But we'll see. There's, there's no way they can survive. I mean, they're taking on loans that it'll take 50 years or more to pay at really outrageous rates. I mean, prime rates from banks, from central banks to banks, they're running one quarter of one percent, or in the eurozone, one and a quarter percent. I mean, how can they charge these people four and five and six percent? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, there's no way a way out for these people. It's dreadful. So, and you know, no matter what they decide, that the people say, in in mass, say sixty-five percent. If they say. I don't care what kind of an agreement you made. I'm not going to abide by it. I think I'm going to shut my business down. I don't have to work if I don't want to. I took my, all my money out of the bank and bought gold and silver coins, so what do I care what they do? A lot of people have done that, incidentally. And a lot of people have allowed their companies to go into bankruptcy. Thousands of them. Because they didn't want to play the game. Anyway, that's where I see it at the moment. But stay tuned 
because tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, I know. It just keeps uh, changing, and usually it's continuing to um, go worse and worse with each passing week. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And to uh, answer your question about uh, what day the Orthodox Christians celebrate Christmas, Bob, it depends. Uh, those that follow the Julian uh, calendar, a.k.a. the old calendar, celebrate it on uh, the 7th of January. And those that follow the new calendar, a.k.a. the Gregorian calendar, celebrate it on December 25th. So you could go either way. And I did hear a story a couple days ago, Bob, regarding the situation in Greece monetarily, where a lot of Greeks are resulting to actually bartering, which I think is a plus. I think that's the direction a lot of people are going to unfortunately have to go. Well, that kills all the tax revenue. <laughs> I mean, they can't keep track of that. It's, it's going to be an interesting uh, adventure. And I think your comment on bartering is a good one. Uh, I've written about it. And it, it'll show people that bartering actually works. You know, whether it's for a bushel of beans uh, versus uh, two silver drachmas or whatever, uh, you're going to see it happen. Uh, people are disgusted. I mean, the politicians are ruling the country. And it's really because the people weren't paying attention. They didn't know what their politicians were doing. They were too busy doing what everybody else does in life, trying to live. And uh, that's why amalgamation, these un unnatural alliances, don't work. They simply don't work. And, you know, you can go into a country, and the thought process is the people in the north of the country versus the people in the south of the country are totally different. And it happens in every country, no matter what size. So trying to make this world government, uh, European Union, Euro work is the pipe dreams of people who are mentally unstable, maybe even sane. That's my take, and it has been from the very beginning. You know, I lived in those countries, not in Greece, but in the others, all the others, actually. You know, in the western part of Europe, I, when I was there, I wasn't allowed to go into Eastern Europe unless it was on a mission. So I, I never got there as a civilian. In fact, they were so strict that in order to get to Berlin, you either flew in, from, say, Frankfurt, or you take a, a train. And I never went there by plane, but they wouldn't allow us to go in by train because it was about 20 miles of territory that was under the control of the Soviet Union. And they were afraid, knowing who I was, because we all knew each other, you know, there was no big secrets among the uh, counterintelligence operatives, and they were afraid that they'd snatch us and hold us for ransom, you know, give us one of ours for one of yours or something. And uh, so I never got to Berlin, and uh, I never got to what was once behind the Iron Curtain either, except as an uninvited visitor. Well, Bob, give the U.S. just about a couple more years, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll get the same feel here. <laughs> Probably. Well, the way they're doing things in America, they're balkanizing it. And uh, if you remember the speech by the president at the beginning of his term, he was going to have a national army, an internal army, just like the Gestapo or the SS or the brown shirts or uh, I forget what they used to call the Russians. SA. What's that? The SA? No, the SA was the German counterpart of the administrative part of the, of the SS. And, uh, but I'm talking about the Russians. Um, oh, the Russians. I can't remember what they were called. The NKVD? No, no, that was the internal police. Okay. And 
and the external was the KGB. But they had others, and they had uh, special units like we had the uh, Green Berets, you know, they had the Spetsnaz. <laughs> I can't remember that one term. But anyway, it's not important. Uh, it's all history. But you learn from it. And that's what they're trying to set up in the United States. And whether it's socialist, fascist, communist, it doesn't make any difference. They're all bad. Try living under them. I mean, ask the people who lived for almost 100 years under communism. It was horrible. I mean, the first thing they do is kill all the people that put them in power. And then they round up anybody who says anything about anything that they don't like. They liquidate them or put them to work doing something in work that nobody wants to do. And so totalitarianism is awful. And we've been very fortunate in America not to have had it. But we're headed that way fast. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, we always talk about how, you know, people don't learn from history, but the the reality is they do learn from history. It's just they, they learn the wrong way. They learn what others have done in the past and say, hey, that's a good idea. I mean, it's pretty twisted the way they see things, unfortunately. Well, I think a lot of it comes from your experiences in early life, and I'm talking about from four or five years old onward, (laughs) the influence of your parents and your schools, your teachers. And I think everybody's got a different time clock. And some people have been given other gifts that others don't have. And so I think each and every life is different, very different. Although people may think it's the same, it's not. And sometimes things happen in life for the strangest reasons. And sometimes in life, people do things that they never thought they'd do. And so... I think the ability of people to sometimes grasp even simple subjects is limited. You know, when I was going to school, I saw people who worked at the maximum to become successful. (coughs) And it wasn't enough. It was devastating. Then I saw people who had it all (coughs) and really didn't care until they were forced to use the equipment they've been given. So different people do different things for different reasons. And we never know who's going to rise to the top of any given profession and who isn't. And sometimes there's a lot of strange events that happen in life to keep people from pursuing what would be good for them and others. We're at the beginning of the dry season. And believe me, is it dry. And that's why I'm doing this little coughing act here, and I apologize. That's no problem, Bob. It's not that I've been on the air too much today. It's that the air is dry. That happens, as they say. And I I agree with you, Bob. I, I think you're absolutely right that, you know, it's sad how there are people out there that well you know bust their tail to try and and make something of themselves but you know a series of unfortunate events i.e a a depression or a a terrible situation as regard to the economy or uh, the government overtaxing over regulation too much red tape can you know ruin people and we see that happening you know right before our very eyes that's true But some people have it easy in life because God gave them beautiful minds and there's no rhyme or reason for it. Um, 
you can have a family of seven and two are brilliant and the rest of them are retards. You know, you figure it out. I can't. And um, that's just the way it is. I think a lot of people can't identify either with the strengths that they have and use them and try to take advantage of them. And some people wander into things that they didn't know that they would be enormously successful at. I mean, I always wanted to be a stockbroker. It was the closest thing to being a bookmaker. Of course, the government does that now. But in the olden days, if you wanted to bet, you'd have a bookmaker. And um, so I was very successful at being a stockbroker. I mean, you can't be when you're there for almost 30 years. And on a whim, I started the publication, and this career is greater than the last one. I don't make a lot of money, but I, at my age, who cares? I mean, where I'm going, they don't, they don't have money. So I don't worry about that. I don't even think about it. So you have to use the equipment you've been given, and you have to use the situations you've been given. Uh, life is difficult. It is not easy. For the caveman or you and I, nothing has really changed. It's just the circumstances. I wasn't very good at killing dinosaurs, so I didn't eat. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's the way it is. And just think for a moment. You know, our ancestors were doing that or something similar. And the weak did not survive, especially with those saber-toothed tigers running around. But today, we don't have saber-toothed tigers running around. What we have is bankers in Wall Street, in the city of London, a racket to remove people's wealth, to steal. I mean, being rich isn't enough. They have to be mega rich and mega powerful. And that's why taking down the financial system is a wonderful idea. Everybody's going to be a loser, me included. Then why would I say that? The only way to beat these people is take away their power base. And that's banking and securities, Wall Street, lending, fractional banking. Take it away from them. And they can't do it anymore, can they? And then we get our freedom back. And they go where they belong, uh, do belong where they should go. And that's to prison. And we'll help them arrange that. You know, they listen to every program I'm on. And I always make sure I mention that. Just to let them know that they're not going to win, we are, the people of the world. And they're not going to ever be able to do it again because we know the mistakes of the past when these things have happened over and over again and they didn't get put out of commission, so to speak. Well, this time they will be. And maybe we'll have a happier life for people who follow us in the sense that they're just now being born or have been in the last 50 years or so. And so that's the goal, to help the world be a better place. Man, I, I agree 110% with that sentiment, Bob. And that's what it's about. It's not really about us. It's about the future. It's about the future of mankind, of humanity, uh, people's children and grandchildren and future generations. That's what this fight is really, really comes down to because – most of us probably won't live to see that that victory. You know, I mean, most of us will probably go down, you know, in battle against the enemy. But it's the hope that those that are still standing when the dust settles, that they'll be able to see what happened and see how terrible it was and re recognize the fact that there has to be a better way. Well, the people of, of the world certainly have the equipment to do what's needed. I mean, there's so many bright people out there. 
millions of them that don't know and have never even come close to their potential. And there's millions of people who are smarter than these criminals that are running this thing. They're just like a, a vast mafia. Of course, their methods or operation are different, but the tact that's been taken by the bankers and the Illuminists is one in which they can function within a society and get away with it up to a certain point. So I think uh, there's, going to, there's going to be some great changes. I'm very optimistic about the future, but people have to understand you didn't do your job. You're probably going to lose 90, 98% of what you have, like people did during the Depression, unless you've got gold and silver related assets and have taken the time and money to put away food and things like that. But the only way you're going to make the system change is by forcing change. And the people in charge, they know for every reaction is a, an action that, that fundamentally changed things. They're waiting and they think they're ready for you in your demonstrations and, and uh, their response of martial law. I think you're seeing the end of an era that's been in, probably in place for a thousand years as to how people conduct their lives. And uh, hopefully that will occur in the next 10 years, maybe even five. And we start all over again. We're perfectly, perfectly capable of it, especially if we help one another. I mean, we're all in this boat together, and uh, there's no sense in one person rowing one way and <laughs> the other person rowing the other. Uh, no sense in it at all. No, that's why that's I talk so very cool. often about bringing people together yeah. who think of things differently. We get a break coming up? No, 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 we're fine. Uh, I, I agree entirely, Bob, and that's something I talk about you know, a lot on my podcast is that we – you know, we have differences. We have different points of view, different uh, pigments of skin, different uh, religions, different points of view. But in the end, we're all the same species on the same big giant ball, and we all depend on the same things to survive, you know, food, water, oxygen. And it's okay to have differences, but at the same time, there does come a point when we have to learn to work together or else eventually we're going to end up destroying each other. And everything that we've been given. Very true. And, and we, we have been given that. It was a gift. Because we have no control over it. None whatsoever. You know, how we're born, who our parents are, what kind of equipment we've, we've been given, physically and mentally. It's certainly a whole study unto itself. Definitely. And you could spend... Um, you know, vast amount of time discussing uh, this philosophy. And it is my hope that eventually we will get a rise above this divide and conquer tactic because it's, it's the tool of the powers that be. They, they love creating these, these groups to keep this group fighting this group and going at each other's throats while the real enemy st sits behind the scenes laughing at us all. And my hope is that that is starting to change, that we're starting to finally, you know, rise up and, and look at the, the real perpetrator for all of our woes and problems in the world today. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, speaking of one of the huge problems in the world, central banking, uh, such as the uh, Federal Reserve, uh, they're painting this picture, Bob, of a, a brighter economy and are holding off new actions because of a stronger growth. And the Fed officials are also saying that the economy has strengthened and the consumers have stepped up spending. I don't know what, what other better way to ask this question, Bob. What the hell is the Fed smoking? Well, uh, they, they are an agency created to control government, and that agency 
was passed by law, no matter how it got passed, it, it's law. And the Federal Reserve is controlled by a handful of banks on Wall Street. They own it. And they essentially do what they want to do. Uh, they are the ones who are the owners of inside information. You know why? Because they create it. They don't have to get it from anybody else. They are the core, the focal point, the nexus of what goes on. And they do it and get away with it. And um, they probably would continue to do that over the years if people hadn't come along and said, gee, um, I don't want to do that anymore. And so that's what we're faced now. People are saying, I don't want to do that anymore because they've discovered what these people are up to. And that's power and, and looting. They get a racket going, and we're going to put an end to it. It's taken a long time to tell people what they should and they should not do and what the Fed is all about and the controlling power that they have. But the people are catching on. And, and that is definitely one of the positives in these dark times is the fact that people are waking up to the Federal Reserve, the central banking system, the police state, the powers that be. And unfortunately... The powers that be know this as well. They know that, that we're catching on to their act, and you've mentioned this time and time again about that fact as well. And I agree, too, in time, we are going to beat them. But they are got a lot of tricks up their sleeves still to use against us, and one of them, of course, is their favorite, war. And it, this is something you and I have discussed as well because this has seems to be an ongoing cycle, but it, it seems to be uh, – Yesterday when I came across this, you know, the saber rattling, the latest from Israel, the U.S. and the U.K. now of a possible attack on Iran. I mean, it, is it is it a reality, Bob, that we could be weeks or even days away from a conflict here? And what's the likelihood of this spinning out of control, a possible attack on Iran into a, a regional or perhaps even a, a global world war? Well, nothing is going to be out of control when they do it. Um, it'll be all finely planned. And it'll be a pretty nasty war uh, because they're going to use nuclear weapons. At least Israel is. I just, I was listening to Coast to Coast AM last night and uh, there was a guest on the show. And, I mean, he, he was, you know, pointing out how th this is coming and Iran, or Israel has to go in and stop Iran from, you know, you know, a nuclear power plant, even though it would take some time after the plant power plant is established and up and running before they can even produce one single bomb. Meanwhile, as most people know, Israel has, you know, plenty of nuclear bombs themselves. And I just I see this whole thing backfire, and especially the fact that you have China and Russia on the other end really asserting themselves lately. I mean, especially with what happened in Libya. They're, they're ticked off about that. Uh, they say they're going to attempt, they're going to block any attempt to do the same thing in Syria. So I, I think that, yeah, it is being done by design, but at the same time, this could be a lot worse than what a lot of people are, even the neocons out there are speculating. I think you have to look at all the parts in this thing. And the only reason they would have a war against Iran is to shield, cover what's going on someplace else, in this case financially and economically. And it's pretty easy to have wars when people are out of work. You say, well, I got something for you to do. You can go over and kill those guys over there. And uh, so it's all well planned, all well laid out. And um, they do it when they want to do it. And I'll present every justification that you can think of. And people will accept it. They won't think beyond their nose. And they'll say, oh, those people over there, they're terrible because they don't live the way that we do. 
<clears throat> and they don't understand that they were the, the best country in the world and the most powerful with the best fighters. So we've got to go over and show them. I've seen it happen several times already. Many times, actually. It proves nothing. It just keeps that power structure in control. And that's what we don't want. We don't want wars and revolutions. We want to win the hearts and minds of people through education. And we're, they're giving us the time to do that, which is dumb. But be as it may, it's being done. And um, I, I think they will. I think we'll, they will use law or war as a last resort. Over the last five years, they have had plenty of opportunity to do it, and they haven't. They made people who make predictions in relation to having war between Israel and Iran look like fools. I mean, I can remember three years ago, it's going to happen in August. And then the year after that, it's going to happen in September. And then the year after that, which is this year, it was going to happen in August. Well, it didn't happen. The collapse of the financial system. People were putting dates on it. Can't do that. We don't know. There's so many variables. Uh, things can change at, at a moment's notice. So that something doesn't happen, like this war that we're talking of. It doesn't happen that, next week. It happens three weeks, three years from now next week. So, look, you live your life to do your best you can. Take care of your family. Do the things needed to protect them. And when the war comes, it comes, if they can get away with it. And they're willing to do anything. They don't care whether you know about it or not. Bob, what would be your advice to those in any decision-making area and facet about doing whatever you could to avoid this potential war, whether it comes in a few days, a few weeks, or a few years, like you said, whenever it happens, it seems to be on the table one way or the other. What, what would be your advice to them to try and convince them, just say no? Well, they're not, you're not going to convince them of anything. They're going to do what they want to do. But if you educate people and you tell them you don't, you don't want to have a war, you don't want to die, you don't want other people to die either. So you get after Congress and see if you can impress upon them well, we shouldn't have this war which they're planning. And the whole world knows they're planning a war. It's nothing new. It's in the newspapers and radio and television every day. I fear that they're eventually going to do it, especially with the way things are in this country and well, throughout the rest of the world. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Another quick question for you, Bob. Then we got a couple of uh, email questions. Uh, the White House is being subpoenaed um, because of this whole um, uh, Solyndra uh, scandal. And along with uh, what's been transpiring with uh, Operation Fast and Furious, do you think anything is going to come of this, either um, or both uh, of these um, flags heading towards the um, Obama administration? Well, maybe, but generally speaking, no. It's a brotherhood of crime. These people all protect each other. They're all crooks. And they know that they don't want any other crooks to get caught doing anything if they can help it. And so all efforts will be made to sweep this under the rug as well as fast and furious. You've got to understand these people are criminals. And once it, you can get it into your head and understand that they really are, then your approach changes. And you look at them in a different light. And you get a hold of congressmen and say, look at this, what's going on. This is all criminal. Why isn't something done? Now, of course, if Congress refuses to act, then there's nothing you can do about it unless you want to overthrow the government. So there's things you're going to have to live with until power changes. And that's what bringing the financial system down is all about. They want to bring it down for one reason, so they can imprison you 
and steal everything you have from you. People like me want it taken down because we want to destroy the power base of people who are totally evil. I only hope that our side uh, wins that struggle and that they end up failing miserably. And I, I think that it will happen because more and more people are waking up, more and more people are becoming aware of the reality around us. And uh, moving on to the questions uh, sent via email, and if any of you would like to email Bob questions uh, during the interviews, you can do so at the website, freedomfiles.us. This one coming from Silver Bullet. How long would it take for Mexico to back the peso with silver? There's five people holding it up, and I'm looking into that right now to find out who they are and particularly what party they're in. They've been paid off by the bankers, and I know that. And so the question is, who are they? And uh, once I find out, then I'll, my, I might be able to do something about it. Um, you get an election coming up in November of next year, one year from now, and it's a multiple election where the president uh, presently can't run again, and uh, the party that's in power in the executive is PAN, PAN, and they might run a woman. That's the information I've been getting. And uh, PRI, which is PRI, <clears throat> they have several very attractive candidates, you know, from a business and intellectual viewpoint. And PRI changed a, a great deal in the last 10 or 15 years. They're not the evil, thieving monstrosity that they once were. Um, so once I get a bead on who's trying to stop the legislation, uh, then I'll have a better idea of the possibilities after the election. Because it doesn't look now like it's going to happen before the election. Now some of these people, of these five, some of them may not get elected if they're running. They probably will have to run. So that'll be a factor. But the rest of the Chamber of Deputies, and which is the House, and the Senate, they're for this. They want to back the currency. Mexican has done, Mexico has done extraordinarily well over the last three years compared to the U.S., England, and Europe. And um, I think they will continue to do so. One of the reasons why is very few people borrow money to build houses. Most people who build houses pay cash. And so that's why they're better off. And that's true throughout Latin America. And so maybe next year would be a good time. The members of PRI, PRI, will take more seats in both houses. And they already have the majority. And they will take the election for the presidency. And so another thing that will come from that, too, is I believe a deal will be made with the criminals that you stop doing what you're doing. And there was a deal before. But the president administration from the president decided to take a different tack, like killing the narcotics people. And it's only ended up in 30,000 people be getting killed. And uh, the government wanted terror, they got it. And uh, it, it solved nothing. And the majority of people agree with what the government did like 83% in trying to get rid of these criminals. But 
there is the other side of that that the public never understands. And that is many people get paid off by these criminals. And the money that they bring into that country is second only to oil revenues. Oil revenues are $46 billion. They're bringing in $40 billion from the sale of narcotics in the United States. So if you stop transshipment trans and distribution and sales, there'll be no revenue coming into Mexico from that. Now, that's a big chunk of revenue. So it's a very ambivalent situation. So we'll just have to see. But I think there's a an excellent chance that the peso will be back with silver. They're now the world's largest silver producer. So I mean, I, I seriously hope that things do turn around for the better in Mexico. And uh, from uh, silver to gold, uh, the next question comes from Joe. Uh, he wants to know, is it necessary for the dollar to decline in value before gold can push through $2,200? Absolutely no. In the last three years, gold broke away from the dollar. The influence of the dollar on gold is about 20% of what, is, what it was three and a half years ago. People are realizing that gold and silver are the only real currencies in the world. We've come full circle, and that's what can be expected. That's definitely it's as simple good. as that. You don't want to be in any currency, <laughs> only for needs within your life, paying bills, getting food, all the things you must do. And you use currency to do, do that, either in a form of a credit or debit card or a check. I tell people not to do that. I tell them to pay cash. And uh, then they never have to worry about whether the bank closes or whatever. And so... I think it's really important that people understand what we're talking about and how to avoid getting entrapped. And the final question is from Max. What is your take on Kane's 999 plan? Uh, I really don't think it's workable. And um, what is the answer? I haven't spent a lot of time on it. But I would think that some sort of a flat tax would work. And the main thing is that money would flow directly to the government and there would be none of these write-offs and you wouldn't need the IRS except perhaps to collect money for the government. You know, Business A says, well, we made a million dollars and and this is, uh, our tax is 17%. Here it is. There's no write-offs here. There's nothing to argue about. And revenue would go through the roof. And even if it was a 1% or 2% tax, revenue would increase. The less money you give government, the better, because they'll always find ways to spend it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's been proven time and time again, unfortunately. Bob, we have only about a minute left how can people get the International Forecaster? Well, they can go to theinternationalforecaster.com. That's theinternationalforecaster.com. Or they can go to www.intforecaster.com. The forecaster is about business, finance, economics, social, and political issues all over the world published by email, Wednesday and Saturdays, running 35 or 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy for those of you who are not on the Internet. And everything you need to know every week is there. 
You can also, if you would like, ask a question. We answer everyone. Or you can get free copies. Or you can get a copy of our latest report on gold and silver shares. And you can do that by emailing us. And that address is bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T, F-O-R-E, C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to call toll free, that number is 877-479-8178. 877-479-8178. And you can get copies of the, the publication there. And for those of you who want to become subscribers, they are offering a free one year subscription. The deal that they're offering is terrific. Please take advantage of it. Bob, thank you so much for joining me. I will talk to you next week, sir. Okay, and thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.